The current version of Open Photon utilizes scalar diffraction theory to simulate light propagation from a laser, accounting for the effects of lenses and test objects. The propagation of light and other waves is conceptually explained by Hauchen Fresnel principle. But in order to implement such principle in a computer, it must take the form of a mathematical expression. As of now, there are four most popular equations that efficiently model the propagation of waves. The three diffraction integrals, namely fresnel kirchhoff formula, Rayleigh-Sommerfeld solution 1, and Rayleigh-Sommerfeld solution 2, assume that components of light field propagate as a bunch of diffracting spherical waves or parabolic waves if you apply some approximations. The other model is called angular spectrum, where we assume that components of light field propagate as a bunch of diffracting plane waves moving in different directions. One of the disadvantages of angular spectrum is that it suffers from evanescent waves over long distances. In other words, some components are exaggeratedly attenuated because of frequency values and propagation distance. This Python library focuses on using the rayleigh Summerfield Solution 1 or RS1 because it has a structure that can be simplified to exploit the Fourier transform convolution theorem and consequently the fast Fourier transform algorithm. Now in order to further simplify RS1, we will be using either its Fresnel or near field approximation or its Fraunhofer or far field approximation. But how do we decide on which approximation to use for our simulation? Well, the answer lies on this what we call Fresnel number. Here, n sub f is the Fresnel number, r is the radius of a circular aperture. If your aperture is square, then r is its half width. Lambda is the wavelength of your source field and z is the distance to the observation plane. To calculate Fresnel number, consider this example. If the laser beam travels in the z direction, then I can position the xy plane in the source plane that coincides at z equals 0. In this setup, let the z value be the propagation distance. On the xy plane, the laser has a side length of L and the aperture radius is R. If the aperture radius is 2.6 centimeters, the light source has a wavelength of 500 nanometers and our propagation distance is 1 meter, then the resulting Fresnel number is 1,352. Based on some references, if the Fresnel number is way, way less than 1.0, then we use the Fraunhofer approximation. Otherwise, we use the Fresnel approximation. And since our sample setup is within the Fresnel region, we will be using the Fresnel approximation. To use Open Photon, go to your terminal, be sure you are connected to the internet, and simply type pip install open photon. If you're using a Python IDE and you did not configure your project to access your global Python packages, then you can go to the terminal of your IDE and then type pip install open photon so that your virtual environment is installed with open photon package. Create a Python script or a Python file. For example, let's name it as beam propagate or open photon underscore demo. Even though I already configured my project to inherit global Python packages, I'll still show you how to install open photon in your virtual environment in case you are strict with the contents of your virtual environment. So click terminal and then type pip install open photon. Let me close this project panel to focus our view on the editor. After that, go back to our editor and type import open photon. Now to avoid repeatedly typing open photon, we use the as keyword to shorten it to op. So that's it. We can now use open photon. So first, let's create a laser beam. Let's save the wave field to a variable called u sub 0. And then to access the laser device, just type op.devices.laserbeam. As an example, Let's assume that the side length of the laser is 6 cm. Also, let's just say that the laser has an aperture radius of 2.6 cm. In addition, let's say that the wavelength of our laser is fixed to 500 nanometers because we will need this wavelength during propagation. And finally, let's assume that the number of samples or perhaps the number of pixels along the x direction and y direction is 1024 pixels. For this number of pixels, I recommend that you use a value that is a power of 2 because FFT is most efficient for this number of samples. 
Just in case you want to print a scale bar when you want to display the wave field, we can also calculate the physical size of one sample or one pixel. That is dx is equal to L over N. Let's try to view what the wave field of this laser beam looks like by displaying its intensity and phase. Let's import matplotlib. If matplotlib and matplotlib underscore scale bar are not in your virtual environment, fire up your terminal and pip install matplotlib and matplotlib underscore scale bar. Then import matplotlib.pyplot as plt and from matplotlib underscore scale bar import scale bar. First, let's use a dark background. Then, create two subplots to simultaneously display intensity and phase. By the way, let's pass the value of the wave field to a variable so that we can easily edit it for intensity and phase. To calculate intensity, let's use the NumPy function abs or abs to get the magnitude of a complex number. To do this, let's import NumPy as np. If NumPy is not in your system, then type pip install NumPy. Intensity is then equal to np.abs of u. To get the phase, let's use NumPy's angle function. Therefore, phase is equal to np.abs of np.angle of u. We can now plot intensity and phase with the following settings. Click run. Oops, this is supposed to be dot scale bar. Click run again. Uh, this is supposed to be index 1. Click run again. Note that the entire phase value is 0 because we did not introduce any phase distribution. For this current version of OpenPhoton, the op.devices.laserbeam function only creates a laser beam with a Gaussian intensity profile and no initial phase distribution. Let's now forward propagate this beam before the lens and see what it looks like. To do this, save the new wave to u sub 1, then type op.rayleigh-sommerfeld dot Fresnel approximation. We use Fresnel approximation based on our earlier calculation of Fresnel number. The first argument of this function is the input field which in our case is u sub 0, then the side length of our wave field, and then the wavelength of our wave field. And finally, the propagation distance. For now, let the wave field propagate to a distance of 1.5 meters. Let's view the wave field by changing u sub 0 to u1, then click run. Note that the initial phase coming from the inner radius of the aperture is still the same. Let's now apply the effect of converging lens to the wave field. To do this, let's create first a lens. So type lens equals op.lenses.convergingLens. Let's copy the size of the input field by feeding it to the function. For now, let the diameter of the lens be the same as the laser side length L. The wavelength is needed for the calculation of the lens phase matrix. And finally, let's assume that the lens has a focal length of 30 meters. Apparently, this is quite long for a focal length that the lens almost acts like a collimator. But need I remind you that the values of the focal length, f number, pixel size, and propagation distance are all interconnected due to the limitations set upon by critical sampling. In other words, there will be values for different variables where artifacts will show up in your simulation and such discussion is beyond the scope of this current tutorial. Let's multiply the lens function to our wave field. To do this, type u sub 2 equals np that multiply u sub 1 and lens. Let's view u sub 2 by changing u sub 1 to u sub 2 in this part and then click run. This time, the lens has now introduced a phased variation to our wave field. Let's forward propagate u sub 2 before our test object and see what it looks like. To accomplish this, type u3 equals op.rayleigh-sommerfeld.fresnel approximation and the arguments are u sub 2, l, wavelength, and 1.5 meters. So basically, we're assuming that the test object is beyond 1.5 meters away from the lens. Let's view u sub 3 by changing u2 to u3 and then click run. Note that the phase variation has been carried over by the wave field. Now, let our wave pass through our test object. 
By the way, our test object is simply the USAF underscore 1951 test image. In the current implementation of the function SLM amplitude, it simply converts the image in such a way the black region is an opaque region in a physical sense and the white region is an aperture. You can download this image from my GitHub account. The link is in the description box below. But of course, you can try other black and white or even gradient image of your own. Save the file name of your image to a variable like file name. So my image is in the same directory with my script. There's no need to include relative paths in the variable. Convert this image into a NumPy array by using the SLM amplitude function. In terms of code, this function simply converts an RGB image into an array of real number from 0 to 1. 0 being the color white, 1 being the color black, and in between are the grayscale values. I just set the number of pixels to 1024. Then simply multiply our test object to our wave field. So we do this by typing u4 equals np dot multiply u3 and the test object. Let's view u4 by changing u3 to u4 in this part and then click run. Now our test object blocked most of the amplitude from our initial wave field. Let's forward propagate U4 and maybe at a distance of let's say 3 meters. So to accomplish this, type U5 equals op.rayleigh.summerfield.fresnel approximation. Our arguments are U4, L, wavelength, and of course the propagation distance which is 3 meters. Let us view this wave. Change U4 to U5 then click run. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit the notification bell button for awesome updates. Thank you for watching.